The battle of the big rockets is heating up. While SpaceX is reigning supreme in the rocket industry, somehow Blue Origin seems risen after a long period of silence. Bezos, who likes to talk a big game that they've never had much to show for, is now confident because all that's set to change in 2024. Blue Origin's new Glenn production campaign is further ahead than we think. Stay tuned as we dive into this and more in today's episode of Alpha Tech. If you believe that Blue Origin's content with a space tourism business model, take a look at their New Glenn platform. New Glenn will be a direct competitor in the future with SpaceX. After several years of delays, the unveiling of New Glenn has finally revealed some details about the rocket. During a workshop on September 11th at the World Satellite Business Week conference in Paris, Jared Jones, senior vice president for New Glenn at Blue Origin, said the company's working towards the first launch of that rocket in 2024. They even mentioned multiple launches of this rocket, though they didn't provide a more precise time frame. The first flight vehicle will arrive at the integration facility by the end of the year, followed by integrated hot fire tests. He also shared that the company has four boosters in various stages of development, each designed to be reused up to 25 times. And the company was also looking at other ways to double its launch capacity that they didn't go into. To be honest, this is good news for Blue enthusiasts, but given Blue Origin's track record over the last 10 years, it's left many skeptical about the time frame. We're not sure if they've completed all four of these boosters yet, or if these are just flying components being manufactured without any engines installed. BO's statement seems somewhat vague, which is in line with their traditionally secretive nature. The question that arises is when these components will actually be ready for integration, even if they may begin to exceed the time frame. In addition, Jones expressed his perspective on Blue Origin's efforts, stating, I obviously follow the success of SpaceX, and he feels more inspired when he hears remarks like those made by Ochinero, SpaceX's VP, who mentioned, where were you last year? It seems like Blue Origin's response to SpaceX is they continue to closely monitor SpaceX's success and draw inspiration from it to compete in the rapidly advancing space race. Jones affirmed ambitiously, that's our future. Despite the doubts, Blue Origin's quite confident in this assertion, and it's not without good reason. For a company known for its reticence regarding updates on its rocket production progress, the recent influx of images showcasing the new Glenn production process at its critical facility in Washington signals a development in its rocket production work. It's been a while since we last got a glimpse inside Blue Origin's factory. Back then, they were working on the initial stage mock-up of New Glenn. Beyond the structural test article, there was little visible progress on actual test tanks and flight components. After this point, communication from the company dwindled. Fortunately, recent images and info shed light on the ongoing work. During a recent visit by a senior director for manufacturing operations and assembly at Blue Origin, we can see various rocket stage components, interstage sections, and payload fairing domes all laid out on the factory floor. In addition, there are modern machines and equipment that appear relatively clean, demonstrating the company's investment in the production phases. These manufacturing tools are strategically positioned near the rocket components. This setup facilitates the smooth transfer of completed vehicle stages onto trucks bound for a facility near the launch pad. Currently, four boosters are in production, although it's unclear at what stage it's been completed, but a significant development that bodes well for New Glenn's future. It's worth noting that Blue Origin's approach differs significantly from SpaceX methodology. While Blue Origin's producing four boosters, there's a possibility these could eventually transform into fully operational rockets, rather than mere quick test articles discarded after data collection. This has been the guiding principle of rocket development for Blue Origin thus far. Jeff Bezos is a conservative by nature. In business, he's guided by a smooth development tactic based on the old military adage, slow is smooth, smooth is fast. After each successful launch, a tortoise is drawn on the Blue Origin New Shepard rocket which is a reference to Aesop's fable about the tortoise overtaking the hare. The long-term goal of our small team, says Blue Origin founder, is to find a way for a person to gradually get used to outer space, be turtles, not hares, and spend resources wisely. So is Blue Origin's turtle better than SpaceX's hare, you ask? In fact, the turtle speed at which the new Shepard operates has made Blue Origin proud during its initial operations. However, up till now, it's only undergone nine launches. Furthermore, the Blue Origin flight only lasts 11 minutes, and passengers spend only three of those minutes in zero gravity. And it's not without flaws. A dramatic explosion of New Shepard last year forced the company to halt launches for a year. It'll take some more time before it returns to the market, and the future of Blue Origin's New Glenn still remains uncertain regarding its ability to compete with current spacecraft. Unlike the conservative Bezos, Elon Musk has adopted an aggressive tactic for SpaceX to gain attention through risky innovation. 
SpaceX started developing launch vehicles that could significantly reduce the cost of launching payloads into orbit and bring the possibility of colonizing other planets, particularly Mars. SpaceX's strategy of working tirelessly helped to quickly earn the trust of the government and businesses, attracting multi-billion dollar venture capital investments. Even though the first SpaceX effort failed in 2006 when the first samples of the SpaceX Falcon 1 rocket crashed during testing, but it took just two years for SpaceX to work out the bugs and successfully launch a Falcon 1 payload into orbit, and two more to enter the market with the SpaceX Falcon 9 and Dragon cargo ship to deliver payloads to the ISS. This gave SpaceX access not only to contracts with NASA, but also the U.S. Air Force. On the other hand, SpaceX has embarked on another colossal project, meticulously planned and executed with an unwavering commitment to continuous testing, unafraid of setbacks. At this very moment, they stand on the brink of orbital launches with their cutting-edge Starship rocket. This juncture holds paramount importance, and if New Glenn aspires to remain relevant in the fiercely competitive launch market, Blue Origin must execute its launches as originally intended. Any further delays could spell not just a shaky start, but potentially the demise of New Glenn. Blue Origin appears to be cognizant of this reality, which is why they placed real significance on the first mission of New Glenn. This is more of a challenge than an opportunity for Blue Origin, but it's also an audacious move. The company announced a contract with NASA to launch the Escapade mission to Mars as part of the agency's venture class acquisition of dedicated and rideshare VADR launch services contract targeted for late 2024. During this mission, Escapade is expected to take approximately 11 months to reach Mars after departing Earth's orbit. Both spacecraft will spend several months adjusting their orbits before being in a prime position to collect crucial magnetosphere data. Given the Mars-bound nature of this mission, any launch date delays would result in a significant gap due to the unique orbits and planetary distances involved. While NASA has a broad understanding of Blue Origin's progress, can it meet the timeline? In a statement from NASA, they were quoted as saying that VADR provides FAA-licensed commercial launch services for payloads that can tolerate higher risk by using a lower level of mission assurance and commercial best practices for launching rockets. In other words, they acknowledge the ambitious launch timeline while understanding that it's not the end of the world if the launch dates push further back. That implies that New Glenn might risk losing its inaugural contract if it fails to meet its launch schedule, a scenario that neither Jeff Bezos nor NASA desires. In addition, New Glenn has secured a major contract from Amazon, the world's largest technology giant, with 12 launches. Included in the payload is Kuiper's internet satellites. However, due to Blue Origin's prolonged delays and persistent setbacks over the years, some investment divisions within Amazon have taken legal action against Amazon's board of directors. Lawsuit documents reveal that Amazon's decisions were unduly influenced by Bezos' external interest in Blue Origin. This is also an issue that requires New Glenn to launch on time, and preferably without any unusual incidents. Jeff Bezos himself, NASA, and Amazon's board of directors all hope that New Glenn can be ready in the coming year. What are your thoughts on the matter? Please share your comments below. And that's it for today's episode. We hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. Please let us know what you think in the comments section below. Your feedback's very important to us and helps us make better videos for you. Thanks so much for watching, and see you next time.